West Ham Fan TV here, Dan Nicky on the post-match drive, which is replaced the post-match pint on an away game, especially on the night ones, uh, giving our review of the Leicester 4 West Ham 1 game, and uh, Nicky's face sums it up completely. Uh, yeah, really I, do you know what? I'm, I'm lost for words. and, and Running out of words. Yeah, uh, the, the thing is, like, and I said this on the... Um, Thing. If anyone's worried about my eye, by the way, I've got a black eye. Like uh, I've, I've got a swollen eye. People reckon I was on meth. <laughs> yes, I was. But, um, I'm not. I've just got a swollen eye. I, I am tired, obviously. I'm, you know, I'm just about to drive home. Uh, three hours to uh, to home, but yeah, 11:30. Um, the performance tonight. I mean, we were at sixes and sevens after time. Do you know what I mean? Like, you look at the first goal. It was a well-worked goal and all of that sort of thing, and we was hoping for offside, it wasn't. But the second goal that really killed us before half-time. Yeah. This inexcusable. It's gone out to the left wing. <laughs> it's gone out to a player. He's stopped. Harvey Barnes has, has sort of strolled past everybody, sort of unmarked. He's had time to pick up the ball, cross it in, to Pereira, who was unmarked. I mean, if Barnes is unmarked and Pereira's unmarked, where the fuck is everyone? Well, our players were all sort of huddled in the middle of the fucking box. They're all stood there, all together. No one's fucking running out and closing players down on the wings. Well, I'm telling you, mate, sixes and sevens. And, like, the players that we've got available at the minute, I mean, Zabaleta, bless his fucking heart. I mean, it, you know... The, he works his arse off. The guy's never that. gonna stop. The guy's never gonna stop. He's gonna give his all, um, everything yeah. that he's got. <clears throat> you know, he just he's a year past his sell by date. Yeah. You look at Masuaku, can't defend, he's playing left wing back. Nah. Cresswell he playing. He did do some good defensive stuff earlier. Yeah, on. do you know what? He was he was probably our you know, our, one of our better defenders. He was right in front of us. And that's fucking saying something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cresswell prefers a centre back than a two centre backs. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's just that you know, I am gonna have a go, but when I look at you know, obviously Antonio's just coming back. Anderson's going to be out for four weeks now. Um, Yarmolenko's out for another three yeah. weeks. Um, yeah. But when I look at the bench, nothing to come off the bench. No pace in the team. No power in the team. No drive in the yeah. team. Lanzini's fucking piss poor. Alea is, at the moment, he's stealing a wage because he's just not that type of player. He's not the type of player that we wanted. I he's, thought... he's not that sort of hold-up player. He he's looked a up. different player when Antonio come on. He's old up. Yeah, he did. He did. He yeah. made things up and he but, linked up. But he's won the penalty. Play. He's not good. He's one of them sort of Teddy Sheringham types that sort of drops into the hole and creates for people around him. But there's no one ever around him. Um, no. Antonio come back. He was a, he was a big positive. I thought he had a lot to do with the goal and you know he was he, he gave what Leicester a little bit more to worry about. But inevitably, Dan, we was at sixes and sevens after time. We had no organisation. Uh, we can't pass the ball three, four times without, you know, without giving it away. Um, Leicester, let's be fair, they never got out of second gear no. tonight. And if they needed to get another gear, they would have. But look how easy as well they go from defence yeah. to attack. It's just a few quick passes, and they've already got a chance. You know, whereas us, it, it's hard going. Like it was, it looked like a training. So plan. like laboured is. Like an understatement for our players, they just you know everything's difficult, everything's hard, no movement. I mean, you watch our players, right? And I've picked this up for the last sort of six, seven, eight weeks. We don't react to a ball until the ball's already in flight. Mm. We don't react to it. We don't preempt it. You know, it's like it's like they're playing netball, yeah. and they can't they can't move <clears throat> until. The ball's been touched. It's it's piss poor. It's piss poor. But right, and I'm going to fucking say this. Oh shit, I've got to go over there. Um, I'm going to say this right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the the squad is painfully, painfully thin. Yeah. It's painfully thin. And like, it's you know, when you see. when you see the types of like Aston Villa and and, and all the teams down at bottom, Watford and all that, trying to at least Newcastle. Trying to address, you know, their problems. You know, Newcastle pushing Europe, and so are Southampton. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's that sort of season. But 
Dan, honest, God's honest truth, right? It's such a crazy season that I could quite easily see us bottom of the league come the end yeah. of the season because we are that poor. I don't think there's anybody out there as poor as us. The thing is, because you look to Norwich, right? At least they've got a Pookie who can sort of carry things and make things happen. He's, he's a goal scorer. But, you know, I would argue that we've got on Antonio that I think he makes a huge difference. We can't rely on him. But we're so painfully thin, Dad. Look at Antonio. And it all comes back to the recruitment in the summer. Yeah. They they had us all woodwinked, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be one of them people. I got a bit carried away at the beginning of the season. Not the first time. Um, I got a bit carried away at the beginning of the season saying that we had a, you know, a good squad and all that. Yeah, we had a good squad when everyone was fit. What I fail to remember is how many fucking injuries we get through a season. And when you're trading in four strikers and signing one and one sort of apprentice sort yeah. of thing, you know, I don't know what you expect. Now, I can't see, Dan, right, how they can sell Chicharito and get seven million quid and £140,000 yeah. off of the wage bill and not be looking... But why we'll do you do that after the transfer windows closed? Because, why? because I'm going to tell you the, the reason why. Because they can't be pressured into signing anybody. Yeah, yeah that's it. You know, if if we'd have let Antonio go, uh, uh, Chicharito go on the let's say 15th of August, when the, uh, no, it, it shuts at the beginning shuts of the season, there, doesn't yeah. it? So 15th of July, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and it was getting towards the end of the transfer window people would have been screaming that they needed to sign another player and it's true yeah. how you can let sort of four first team players go you know and, and people will you know say oh but you know you said Perez wasn't good enough and all of this sort of stuff now, Perez's goal scoring record was, was, was well, alright it was like one in three yeah it, was, o- it was okay you know and uh, never got a, a, a lot of um, game time game time Chicharito before he left us one in one he scored in the first game <laughs> you know um, he scored then we sold him it, you know it's, it's it's baffling how they can how they can, how they think they can get away with it and that is what they're trying to do they're trying to just get away with it you know 17th in the league is is good enough for them this season yeah. you know it's good enough they are trying to do it with the with the you know it's, it's I, I described them the other day as um, a pair of people know like the trick that the old anorexic or bulimic person yeah. um, you know makes you think they're doing something about their condition and they're really just not yeah. um, when they're sort of moving the plate around and distracting and all that that's what it is well that's what it is that's what it is you know what I mean and you know it's just lie after lie after lie they, they tell lies on top of lies and they're not doing themselves any favours they're yeah. not doing themselves any favour and I'm sick to the back teeth of talking about the ball I but had a I lovely look, season last season where right? not having to talk about it. We had yeah, a lovely season last you know, it's, But it maybe, so nice. maybe that's one of the problems, Dan. Maybe the reason that they go back to their old ways is because people are not talking about them. People are not getting concerned with them. But you can't, and you can't say <laughs> we ain't giving things a chance because we gave we all gave Pellegrini, we all gave it a project, we all gave it a, a time, and then obviously. It didn't I, I honestly, think, I honestly think, Dan, I, this is the God's honest truth, right? This is this is how I think they run the football club. I think they got Pellegrini in, and Pellegrini came in, and he went, "All right, if you, you know, you're investing a little bit of money. You want to make a little bit of change. Um, you know, you, you, you know, you, you, you're trying to do the right thing." And he got into the squad, and he went, "Right, well, let's have a look what we got." They had a look what he got, and he goes, "Well, you know, we could do with one or two more players." Blah de blah de blah. The, the training ground ain't really worth up to uh, up to scratch. I think you should probably invest a little bit in that. And I'm, well, we're not really going to look into do that at the moment. Okay then. Um, have you got um, a team of scouts? Well, not really. We uh, we just take advice off of uh, agents. Well, you should really look to, to you know to get some scouts in. Well, okay, we're looking at, at the end of the season and all that, that sort of thing. Gets the end of the season and then, oh, well, we're not going to invest in scouts and all that. And Honestly, I think like Pellegr- someone like Pellegrini just must look at it and go, well, you know, if, if you ain't bothered, what's the, what's the fucking point? Yeah. You know, you're not, you know, if you give a master, master craftsman a knife and fork to try and make artwork out of, you know, you can't complain when it, when it all goes tits up and it looks like a piece of shit at the end of the year. Yeah. And that is exactly what they've done. And, and, and I think, honestly, I think their attitude has made others around them 
their attitude bad. Yeah. You know, and they really, really need to stop this sort of self indulged project where, you know, they think they can play fucking championship manager in real life because they know nothing. They know nothing about football. You look at our team now, you look at it, you know, inept. You know, not you know, not investing in the right areas. Don't want to spend the big money on the big players. Fullbacks cost a lot of money now. They try and pick them up for cheap. You know, whoever's available, whoever's available, got his little agent fucking touting him. Yeah, Ryan Fredericks might be available. You know, if you if you uh, you know you uh, give us a three 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 million pound signing on bonus and all that sort of thing. These people are not going. Sorry, Dan, I'll let you talk. Nah, no worries. These people are not going to. Look out for the future of West Ham. These people, agents, you can't rely on agents to give you good players because, yeah, there might be a, a good player come up every now and then, but inevitably, yeah, when they're looking at players, maybe players that can't get contracts, you know, can't find other clubs and all that, they want them to transfer and sign a, a contract with another club because it gives them a, an extended pay. Yeah. Pack it, they can't know. be trusted. They that, can't, you can't trust agents. You know, Queen's fucking agent was was telling the press that Barcelona were in for him yeah. just to drop fucking Ex- like, exactly. Else. You can't trust them. You can't trust. You know, an agent. Who you got for me? Who you got for me? Well, we got this this kid, so and so, so and so. You know, you really should look at it. Barcelona have been sniffing around him, so he must be good. He must be good. Now, that's good enough for me. They lie. They don't care about. Yeah. They don't care about West Ham. They care about putting the money in their pockets. And if you're running a football club like that, how can you expect to go forward? How can you expect anybody to be able to challenge for, I'm not even going to say honours, but just make that sort of season-by-season progression? None of us are sitting here thinking that we're going to get Champions League football. None of us are sitting here thinking we should be you know, getting into Europe or challenging for titles. All we want is to go from 10th to 9th to 8th then to eight, then to eight, then to seven, then to seven, and make that progression the same way like Tottenham did. And I know it keeps it might hurt people to pick them up, but you know you've got to follow that model. Okay, they never won any trophies, but they was fucking close. You know they was one game away from winning the biggest trophy in football. We haven't had Pelic, um, Premier League stability. No, no, and that's you know it's and you know you've got to look at it. You know, adding Halea and Ayeti. To an and out of it, to a pie to a, you know, whoever we've let go in the past. Yeah, that's how you do things, you know. Add them players to the players that you've already got. You know, I heard people on, on the BBC yesterday going, well, they have backed the manager, they spent £210 million, pounds, you know, and they have bought the amount of bitches. They have bought the Andre Ayus for £20 million. They have bought the amount of bitches for £20 million. They have bought... Um, uh, other players for you know twenty five million and all that. Out of all, all the players that they've they've um, mentioned, they're all gone. Yeah. Apart from the ones that we got this year. It, it, exactly. And the thing is, it's not just about how much they spend; it's what they spend it on. And when you look at teams like Leicester <laughs> and Wolves and the recruitment that they do, it's fucking brilliant. And we haven't got that infrastructure behind the scenes to spend the money properly. We can spend fucking but them a billion. Dan, they, they take a long time Stop. to set up. But they've had 10 years. No, no, I'm, yeah. That's what I'm saying. They I take know. a long time to set up. So if they, you know, if, if it's exposed at the moment that we ain't got nothing in place, there ain't going to be nothing in place for the foreseeable future yeah. unless they go out in the summer and absolutely have a huge overhaul, you know. But that's the thing, because we wasn't talking about them last year, because we wasn't on their case last year, they had all that shit in March of 2018. Last year, we give them a little bit of a break, we let Pellegrini sort of settle in and all of that sort of thing. Because we do that, what have they started doing? Creeping back to their old fucking dirty ways, you know? They sacked our director of football three days, three days before our biggest transfer window in our history, because we are hitting for the championship. We are heading for the championship. There's no fucking doubt about it. If we don't do something within the next 10 days of the transfer window, I don't believe we've got enough to stay up this year. No. And the thing is, let, like we're going back to Leicester, they let their director of football go, signed him some brilliant players, that Eduardo guy who he was looking at, then got another geezer in. He's obviously worth yeah. wonders. We've just let fucking um, Lucilos go and brought back our old director of football, Mr. David Sullivan. Who, again, it's not going to be... 
you know, I don't. It, he gets his rocks off by finding players like Lanzini. That know, was and, that, that was a fucking village signing. But that's how he gets but his he rocks off, yeah. like the Afrosacco. Someone that they can spend, they can spend very little money on and get a high return out of them. That's yeah. how he gets his rocks off. And unfortunately, in football, them players are few and far between, especially. Especially when you don't know what attributes that, that make them top players, because he doesn't, he doesn't yeah. know what attributes make top players like them. But the thing is, as well, what he doesn't know as well is what attributes we need in the side and what attributes they can bring to the side. Because you've seen it so many times again with the recruitment, is we sign a player even though they may not fit the players that we have in the the, the, play, uh, the style of exactly. player we want to play. There's like no, Alaire's no, an example. There's no planning and all that. You yeah. can sign the best player in the world. You can sign the best player in the world. If he doesn't fit around your other 10 players yeah. and you're trying to force him in, it's a, a recipe for disaster. You know, Halea is probably, <coughs> last year was probably one of the best sort of providers of goals as a striker yeah. that Europe, in Europe that year, like, you know, that, you know playing in that sort of false nine role. You know, I know he was a centre forward, but he had people around him, and he was dropping off, and he get he likes to get into the space and give himself a little bit of time and all that. He was probably the best at doing that in, you know, certainly in Germany. And what did they do? They brought him to be our target man, to be our our new Andy Carroll, and that's not his game. You know, and if he's got no one around him, you, you see it tonight. You know, very lazy, very inept. I think just lost confidence in what the team can do. Um, not confident that people are going to make the runs, which is not going to be because there's no pace in the team. Not confident that these teams are going to make these players are going to make the runs. Um, Imagine lighting up the fucking um, Bundesliga in Europe, right? Playing in a front two and and lighting up, and you're being brought to this other team. You're being brought, like you said, to be player target man, which you know is not your thing, and you're just expected to go out there every week and try and make things happen. It's got to be frustrating. Yeah, of course it's it will be. be. And you see the difference in the play today when he had a partner, when yeah. he had Antonio, who's yeah. got a bit of raw Completely pace. Completely different. A bit of raw pace, a bit of raw power. Yeah. You know, he knows that he can play a ball into space and Antonio will chase it down. Even if he don't get it initially, he'll chase it down. Yeah. I can't say that about Robert Snodgrass as much as he would like to. Yeah. He just hasn't got the legs right. anymore. But, but look at this. We all know we need pace, right? I've spoken to many West Ham fans. Pace, pace. Even non-West Ham fans, you need pace in the side, right? Why is it all the targets we're looking at, Joe Allen and Zonzi, right? All no of pace. these players. Sim no very pace. similar players. Very yeah. similar players that we've already got, you know? Wait, wait, yeah, exactly. So none of the I can't see any players that we're linked to think, oh, yeah, he's, he's quick, he's fast, he's strong, we need to be looking at, because I've said it before, I love Antonio to bits, but when he was running today, I shit myself every time he ran on the ball, because I thought his hamstring could go, we need, and I've been saying this for, for weeks, another Antonio, another type of player like that, with strength, with pace. But if you know, they ain't pooping their pants tonight, after what I've seen on the pitch, then they're not going to change. They're the most deluded owners, I think, in the league. They're, they're deluded. That's yeah. what they are. They, they, you know, we've seen it with the interviews they came out with, you know, and, and, and talking about celebrating 10 years of trying to achieve success and all of this shit. What well, success? Yeah. They haven't had success in the 23 years they've been involved but, in football. But they moved the goalposts. You look at the interviews, they were talking about how they were celebrating the fact that they've stayed in the Premier League and have kept us in the Premier League. Not good enough. No. Barely, it's, it's what not, barely it's not, it's kept not, us. It's in. not what they wanted to move us to the Olympics because we could have done that up to park. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and you know they've they've really they've they've just failed and all that. And you know what they should do? And um somebody said this to me today, I won't tell you who said this because it's quite private, but he made a point. Is that the fact that they should give back a small token to the fans. And the first sign of change should be something big and a big gesture to fans. And we all know how much they love her and all of that sort of thing. But they should sacrifice Brady because fans are, you know, she's one of the main targets and all of this sort of stuff. And she, um, she's a very stubborn woman who doesn't listen to criticism well and, and um, you know, won't budge on the, on the sort of the sudden yeah. thing. 
and they should say, all right, we're gonna implement change in here. And I'll tell you how we're gonna start. You don't like this woman, you know, she's done, she, she has done wonders for, for, her, for us, but you know, I know the fans don't like her and she, you know, she, uh, she annoys a lot of the fans. Don't you think that'd be scapegoating her in a way to say, look, like, you know, we've sacked this person, that's where the trouble was, well, now everything's gonna be They scapegoat a lot of people, Dan. Yeah, They scapegoat they a lot of people. So, I, it, you know. She's nothing, really, she's nothing to do like, with the football side. She makes us look bad, she, in her eyes, which is embarrassing. But yeah, she yeah, she has not got nothing to do with the football side, Dan. But when everything is concentrated on the business side of, of things, you know, yeah. we're not we're not going anywhere football wise. You know, the, the football wise is stopped, and people think that she is a person that sort of stops you from developing like that because you know of of, of FEMA. But to make a gesture to the fans and, and just to say, look, we're going to try, we're going to really change. You know, we'll, we'll sacrifice this woman yeah. or just walk away. Or just walk away, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and just say, all right, we haven't... You know, because <coughs> I was thinking about this today. The clubs, you know, as I said before, when you want to sell a business or a club, the way you make it the most valuable it could be is that you make it look like it's earning a lot of money and not spending a lot of money. Yeah. And that is what I feel that they're doing to maximise the profit... But look, they've got 20 million quid interest. We still owe them 40 million quid. Let them have their 40 million quid out of the club and, and whatever, just, you know, pay them by hook or by crook. And just say, right, put the sale up, put the club up for sale today yeah. for 300 million, you know, so and so will take 20%. You've earned 200 million, then you only yeah. pay 110 for the club with the. Um, with the debt, yeah. you've earned 100 million on top. Like that's not a bad 10 years, is no. it? If you can say that you've earned five million pounds per year, oh, yeah. plus interest, plus your money back. Yeah. It's not a bad. It's not a bad. Um, you know, yeah. it's not a bad return on your money. Uh, you know? Let me, Let me say this: If I own the club, right, as a fan, as a fan, we'd we'd love to own West Ham. We'd absolutely love to own West Ham. If I had 10 years, right, of West Ham to try and make them big, we all want to get them in the Champions League and all that. And on year 10. I looked and thought, seeing how close we were to getting relegated, I'd have to say, I'm not the right person to be on this club. I've had 10 years to try. It's really not working out. I'm going to have to just find someone else who can do it better because I'm not the right person. You and need to say again, that as a fan. And once true. again, I'll, I'll go back to my, you know, to my, um, to my personal Twitter. I posted a video of last week of David Gold saying exactly that. Yeah. You know, you've got to look at it sometimes and think you're not the right person. You're not yeah. the right person to take it forward. It's, yeah, it's, it's just they've, they've failed. They have absolutely failed. Um, people think that moving, getting us this ground. That they, Gold even said it. Their success is getting us this stadium. That's what they've done. That's what they've achieved. That's the achievement. But it's no achievement no, to anybody. The, 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 the stadium was the means to achieve success. That was what it was supposed to be. But, as I've said before, three out of four seasons, we've been in a relegation battle. Prior, once we got promoted um, in that at Bolin, up to Park, we was never in a relegation battle until we moved it after getting promoted. So, what, you know, what does it say? The thing is, you look around, and we, we're stuck in a cycle now. You know, we, we, we go down, we come back up, we we do okay, then we flirt a little bit, then we do okay again for a couple of years, then we start to really flirt, and you know, as I said, the, the, the players start getting sold from underneath our feet, blah de blah de blah. You, you know, you really um, start to struggle, you go down again. It all gets reset, the reset, but it's like Groundhog Day at West Ham, and it has been for fucking donkey's years, man, donkey's years. Some right. West Ham 92, fans for relegation. 92 right? when the Premier League, was um, was formed. We was down. We was already down. Yeah. In two thousand and two, we went down. Two thousand and eleven, we went down. We drew another relegation. It, it, it seems like every ten years, we are stuck in that cycle. You know, mm. build, 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 something exciting. Then start to let it absolutely dissolve instead of adding on top of it. You know, and like, I don't remember anything else before eighty two, mm. but you know, I. 
I can guarantee that it's been happening for years and years and years. We had some trophies. <laughs> well, 80, we was down. We was in the second division. So, you know, it, so yeah, you get that sort of spate, spate. You know, get up, do okay. You know, I wouldn't say, exactly say stabilise, but get a decent team and you think, right, we're going to really push on now. Then they start to let it deteriorate and over the next four or five years, you're sort of flirting with it, flirting with it, flirting with it until it, eventually you go down again. 80 we was down, 92 we was down, 2011 we was down, um, 2002 we was down, um, and you know it looks like we're gonna, it's gonna happen again this year. Yeah, the only but... problem is with this year is will we come back up? And that championship, people are spending big money in that championship. Yeah. You know, there, there was a, there's reports out saying that you know people are living beyond their means in the championship. Because yeah. they're all desperate because the Villa had to do it to get up. Yeah, because the money is so vast in the Premier League that you have to do it. But you know, we'll see. It's a gamble. We'll see. But, but this is the thing. And to the, I mean, with, with with the stuff about us getting relegated, I mean, I don't really believe in fate and, and all of that stuff. Or it's just because we're West Ham. That's what. We, that's like that's what we are. And I mean, like you take over a club, you should be doing what it takes to prevent that. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from your past. But with Certain fans um, hoping for relegation, or not hoping, but but being happy if we go down. Open because, to it. Yeah, open to it because, yeah, like, you know, I was talking to the Rib Man earlier and he was saying, yeah, it'll be good because we'll get 40,000, you know, proper West Ham fans there every week. I'm happy for it. we at the grounds we'll go to. And I'm thinking, we, I don't think we, I don't think we will get forty thousand. We we don't, we sold out in the championship at Upton Park, right? But you look and in the Premier League, how many fans are giving up their season tickets left, yeah, right, and centre, yeah. leaving, and we're in the Premier League? And these you are loyal look, fans. And this, loyal fans. And this, this is this is a, another problem. What what they've done, the ball, is that they've, they you know they've once they moved that to that Olympic Stadium, yeah. No matter what they say and all that about their heritage and their history and all that, they're trying to move. All, one of their slogans was "History begins here." Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't begin here. You know, we've been around for 125 years. This is a new chapter in our history, but it doesn't begin here. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to leave that reputation, leave that sort of culture of, you know. Um, the casuals and, and, and the oil movement and all of that sort of fans and the, the hooliganism that was connected to West Ham United in the past um, and the working class element and then marketing it towards a more you know and they're not the only ones in the Premier League there are they are marketing it towards uh, the sort of casual consumer rather yeah. than the hardcore fan you know these hardcore fans that are passionate and lo- they don't want people screaming and shouting they don't want people getting upset when we start losing and all that they've marketed and, and pushed for the consumer the day tripper the person yeah. that comes over gets a couple of tickets yeah. um, goes to the club shop spends an absolute fortune in there sits in the stadium eating their popcorn yeah. drinking their fucking drink so they won't be watching our um anti-board comments or they won't be watching yeah, the fan it's, channels you know, they it, just it's not, go it's to not, the game yeah go to the game with their kids and all that family day out blah yeah. blah blah then yeah. they go home um, after the football yeah. no matter what win lose or draw and they do that but what they have failed to remember I believe is that consumers are fickle yeah consumers when you're marketing something towards a, a consumer market rather than a fan base consumers are fickle and when that product is crap, and when that product isn't the top, you know, people come to, like, it's, yeah, it's all well and good saying, you know, we've got the cheapest tickets in the Premier League, well, next year we won't be in the Premier League. Huh? That's it, and you will know, these fans come? Well, you know, saying we've got the tickets, che- t- cheapest tickets in the, pr- in the, in the Championship isn't going to be the same sort of draw, you know, then people that come to watch... West Ham versus Man United, West Ham versus Arsenal, West Ham versus Chelsea, West Ham versus Tottenham, and all that. They're not going to come in the same in the same. Well, they won't come at all when we're playing. When it's West Ham versus Luton, West Ham versus fucking fucking Brentford, Brentford, and all that sort of thing. And that's no disrespect to them, but it's not top class football. They're and if you can't offer yet. top class football for an affordable price, 
You're just all in, offering yeah. a f affordable price. Yeah, and I don't think that's enough to draw yeah. people into West Ham. Well, that's it. So you look, you're going to lose the tourists, you're going to lose the casual fans, and you're going to lose a load of hard. Well, yeah, fans. This, and this is the problem, Dan. A lot of people, like the, the, the people that are saying, oh, I'm glad, I, I hope we do go down, are thinking, yeah, we'll lose the tourists, and then they'll just be all the, ca all the casuals and all the, all the, the, hard all the hardcores. But it won't, because they're walked away, because they're being driven away yeah. by the way that they're, you know, either A, fucking jumping on everyone's fucking case every five minutes when you know um, someone dare stand up or shout or support their team or get a little bit passionate or all that and they're slinging them out banning them and all that the other thing is people have, have sat here for ten years and watched these two people um, well three really absolutely pull our pants down and have us over and they're saying fuck it no more you know West Ham as I knew it was dead I think that I think that's going down could be the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, I think so. Honestly. I think so. Do you know uh, <coughs> going down? You know, I, I can. The thing is with West Ham fans, Dan. I know West Ham fans, and I know how you know hardcore and loyal they are. And I could quite easily see that ground filling up in a championship. I can quite easily see fifty thousand, forty thousand in a championship. <coughs> but the way they're running the club. <laughs> and the way they've run the club so far, I could also quite easily see ten thousand, yeah. which would be an embarrassment. An yeah. embarrassment. Yeah, exactly. It would be like it'll be a fucking graveyard. It? Honestly, well, we 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 laughed at fucking uh, Leighton Orient when they wanted the ground share and was thinking, yeah, what are they going to bring? How many fans are they going to have in there? And just have the volunteer. That's what it will be like because. Like people ain't gonna have the heart to go. It was so different when we went down before when we was up to park. There was this feeling like we still had our red denny, we still had our home, and it was a feeling like we could get back. We had Big Sam, we had Kevin Nolan, and all sorts of things like that, and it was a plan. And now nah, it will just feel like the final nail in the coffin, and I just I can't see it. I see a load. So many people will give up their season tickets if we go down. All right? Can we wrap this up now? Yeah, we can. Um, so do I. Right, Finishing it off, then. What do you reckon? Are you do you are you feeling that we are going to get relegated? I mean, at what percentage are you? I reckon we're seventy five percent down. Wow, that's a that's a lot. Yeah, I do. I honestly think we're seventy five percent down because of the runner fixtures we've got in the next couple of weeks. And you know, I was looking at the table today, you know, and it was so tight, but people are starting to pull away now. Yeah. You know, you had a load of you know had a load of teams that had um you know that. You know that had uh, pulled away, but 20th to 14th, and that's Norwich, um, Villa, us, um, Brighton. Um, I can't think of who else is Bournemouth, yeah. and someone else. That we've got real possibility of going down. Yeah. And I look at Brighton, and they have an upturn in fortune every every season. They're always around now. Um, but then, you know, past 14th, it's like Newcastle 30, we're on 23. I can't see us catching Newcastle. Uh, can't see us catching uh, Burnley. You know, so I think it's, it's it's sort of three of six or three of five. And I think we'll be one of them. I, I honestly think we'll be one of them three, you know. Yeah. I could quite easily see us getting, I can get see us getting out of it if the right things are done in the next 10 days. Or if we have just a little bit of luck and we have sort of players coming back and staying yeah, fit and all yeah, that sort of thing. Can stay fit. But you it's, know, yeah, well, that's I think we're seventy five percent down, and that's the God's honest truth. I think we, we just haven't. I don't think we've got the grit or determination to, to pull ourselves out of it by yeah. one or two. I'm fifty fifty myself. Um, what by finally? David Moyes, I know it's still early doors for him. We've had him for what do you what do you make of him? Uh, do you know what? He's you know he's come in you know he's come in for a tough task. I didn't want him. I think he was a fucking I thought he was a clown the first time, didn't enjoy the brand of football and all that. Done well in the first game. I just don't think this is time to be fiddling about with formations and trying to implement new new formations in. You know, yeah. it's um, you know, I, I think you'd have had a better response playing the same formation, but just with yeah. a different sort of voice in the changing room and a different energy and all that. 
don't think it's the time to start diddling around with formations and start trying to play five at the back and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it done well with the last time, but you know, it obviously doesn't suit this team. You know, I, I want to see, I want to see more intent. I want to see more attacking intent. Intent. Do you think he's working with scraps though? Because. I mean, what he's got, he must be thinking, I need to try, I'm down bare bones, I need to try and be creative here to get something going. Obviously, he, he massively got it wrong earlier, but is he thinking, I don't want to start Antonio because of our... Yeah, we've, not we've got a lot of games moment. coming up as well. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. got a, a tough run of fixtures coming up, like, you know, coming thick and fast. You know, we've got games, we've got a game Saturday, then a game Wednesday, then a game Saturday. Yeah. You know, it's, and, and this is Wednesday, so... In, in two weeks we've got sort of like four or five games yeah and this is the thing with the with the Moyes thing right after the um, look, I've done a video when we signed him saying how tragic it was that we were signing him um, after the Burnley game I had so many people coming after me ah oh, look at you look you was wrong and I said after the uh, not Burnley sorry Bournemouth I said let's not get carried away let's wait and see what happens now these running fixtures ain't a sign that I was right not to want is, who knows but it just shows people got carried away after ball um, and, and people do and, and, and now look at it, we're in a mess we're in a mess so like I said it's worrying times I think it's the ball's fault it is it's I don't think it's I can't blame the manager manager no. hasn't been here but what, like what it's, working it's, with not, is, it's, it's not it's not, not it, even with like signings and that it's 20 seconds they've got 9 days they've got 9 days to sort this shit out right and he's going, well, we might get one, we might get two, and we might get none. He's talking about on deadline day, which yeah, right? and we, he's we like, know what it's like on deadline day. And he's like, well, you know, what is it? One, none, two, what, what, you know, what one? Because you should know by now. Yeah. We're on the 22nd day of January. Mate, honestly, I think, you know, I, well, I said it at the time, it, we should have got it? Big Sam. We should have got Big Sam, and yeah, people I don't like so. him, but... He, he almost guarantees... I'll be, I'll, be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, Dan. I prefer his brand of football to, to Moyes as well. If I'm honest. Look, he showed he can play attacking football. He showed he can do that at West Ham. Yeah. And that, like, he's, in, during his last season, we played some fantastic football under him. He was just a stubborn bastard. But he has never been relegated. Moyes has. Um, so, I don't... If they wanted to go safe, fucking bung him a load of money. So... Yeah, we'll see. I, I really hope we we stay up, but like you, mate, I'm worried. So, <sighs> just got to read the pressing drive home now, guys. What is it? It's an hour and a half. Yeah. Hour and a half. Yeah, so hill on one. So, let us know your comments below. Do you think we will get relegated? And how would you feel if we did? There's some people feeling like, oh well, it should be good. But every cloud, but oh, you're feeling it's disaster. So. Let us know. Check out the fan cams and um, look out for the stuff for build up for West Brom. So one thing left to say.